Well, don't get too attached to me. I don't like it. That depends on your perspective. I have this habit. I'm a deserter. It's what I do. Served in both of them. Against the Mandalorians, before and after Revan, and again, when Revan declared war on the Jedi. Because I followed orders. But it was more than that. You were there. You knew how easy it was to hate the Jedi who sat back in the Republic, evaluating the threat, and watched us die against the Mandalorians? I did, up until the Republic officers began to betray their oaths to the Republic and side with Revan, Admiral Kareth, Mon Halan, General Darid, and all the rest. Right after that final battle at Malachor, I was right there with the rest of the defectors, because it was the right thing to do. The Mandalorians were slaughtering us by the millions. The millions. You were at Serico when they turned the Starib cities into glass craters. At Duro, when basilisk war droids rained like meteors onto the orbiting cities. And when the Mandalorians set fire to the Zoxan plains on Ares III, the fires that still burn. Without the Jedi who turned on the Council, without you, the Republic would have lost the war. And we would all be Mandalorian slaves or corpses. We were loyal to Revan. That was enough. She saved us. After Malachor, after the Mandalorian Wars, that's when the Sith teachings started spreading through the ranks. We knew where our loyalties lay. To the Jedi who came to help us, not the ones who sat back on Dantooine and Coruscant, watching us die. So when those same Jedi who watched us die decided to start fighting us during the Jedi Civil War, we fought back. I fought back. I didn't fight Jedi. I killed them. A lot of them. People say killing Jedi is hard. It's not. You just have to be smart about it. No blasters, no getting close to them, no attacking them directly when you can gun down their allies instead. There's ways of gassing them, drugging them, making them lose control, torturing them. I was really good at it. What's worse is that killing them wasn't the best thing. Making them fall. Making them see our side of it. That was the best. I taught myself techniques. It's hard for Jedi to sense what you're really thinking if you throw up walls of strong emotions and feelings. Lust. Impatience, cowardice. Most Jedi awareness doesn't cruise beyond the surface feelings to see what's deeper. And I was good at that, throwing up walls. And my superiors knew it. Sometimes the Jedi on our side wouldn't even realize I was there. Yeah, I had a talent for it. More like instinct. I wasn't the only one. I know you left at the Mandalorian Wars, so you don't know much about what went on behind the scenes in the Jedi Civil War. But Revan understood one thing. The real battle was going to be fought between the Jedi on both sides. That was the only battle that mattered. Whoever had the most, the strongest Jedi were going to win the Civil War. If Revan couldn't convert Jedi, Revan would kill them. So Revan trained elite Sith units into assassination squads, whose duty was to go out and capture enemy Jedi. I was in one of the special units trained to do this.
Yeah, Revan had plans for all Jedi. I think it was important that the Jedi see her side of things. The Sith teachings. Revan wanted to break them, and then have them join her. One day, I decided not to do it anymore, so I left. Ended up on Nar Shadda, became someone else. I didn't think you would, after Malachor, but it was a chance. I guess I was just tired of keeping it in. And I've been with you only a short time. Enough to know that as soon as someone signs on with you, they haven't got long to live. You got history, and anyone who travels with you doesn't. And maybe I want somebody to know who I was in case a story needs to be set straight. Maybe you understand. Well, there was a woman, a Jedi. She, she gave her life for mine. I never knew her name. She sought me out. She said she had come to save me. She was lying, of course, or I think she was. It doesn't matter. She told enough truth to get my attention. She said that Revan was doing something terrible to Jedi within the Unknown Regions. That when we captured Jedi, they were sent to a place designed to... break them. And that anyone in her service who showed any ability with the Force was sent there too, to turn them, to break them into Dark Jedi, or assassins trained to kill Jedi. She said that's what would happen to me, that I had the Force inside me. That's why I was so good at killing Jedi. And that when the Sith learned of it, there would be no escape. No turning back. I would become an instrument of the dark side. Forever. I had heard talk in the ranks. Troops vanishing. I knew what she meant, but I didn't believe her. Or want to believe her. I did what I did with all Jedi. I hurt her. I hurt her a lot. And then, right when I thought she couldn't take any more, she showed me the Force. In my head. And I felt everything she felt, and I heard just an echo of what the Force was, and how what I was doing, I think I loved her. But it wasn't that kind of love. It was the kind of love where you're willing to give up everything for someone you don't even know. I killed her for crawling in my head, for showing me that. But before she opened her mind to mine, my only thought was that I would love to kill her. And at the end, I killed her because I loved her. In the end, she sacrificed herself to keep my secret, to prevent the Sith from knowing about that touch of the Force inside me. She wasted her life to save me. Me. And I felt her die. When she opened her mind, I've killed Jedi like I said, but I was never there to feel it, to be on the receiving end. And after that, I couldn't stop feeling things. Before, guilt, lust, impatience, it had been orchestrated to get close. Now it all just kept tumbling out, and I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. So I left. I fled with the displaced war veterans to Nar Shaddaa and I lost myself there, until the war came to an end. I wanted no more of Jedi, or Dark Jedi, or the Force. I just wanted to be left alone. And then, I met you on Paragus. And I thought maybe, maybe she had saved me so that I could help you. And if I can't, then I have to try. I didn't want to tell you any of this, but I had to. Because if something happens, I can't let you think I was doing it for something other than the past. Once, a Jedi showed me the Force. I heard it. I felt it. At the time, there was too much pain to confront it. Because if I did, it meant I would be changed into something else. Now, I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I think that by learning how to use it, I can help protect you. 
or at least buy you some time when disaster comes screaming in. I want to learn how to use the Force. I want to learn how to use the Force to help you. What must I do? Is there some... some ritual, or... Really? That's great news. The situation here hasn't improved at all. What did you discover? Voga the Hut? That's preposterous. What makes you think we'd be willing to do that? A glut of fuel isn't going to help our position much in this case. It's a resource that's needed throughout the galaxy, and he'll be able to command a high price for it. Still, we don't have much of a choice. We need fuel, and we need it fast. I'll bring this up with the Telosian Council and urge them to broker a deal with Voga. Now, I believe I gave you my word that there would be a reward for information leading to the establishment of a fuel source for the station. Never believed for a moment that you'd actually be collecting it. But I'm a man of my word, so here you are. Now, I've got to send this information to the Council right away. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? This is Ronto, Scrag. What house rule says I have to go first? Yeah, well, I'm still not convinced you aren't cheating. Warning. If you draw another plus-minus one card, I will enact assassination protocols. This droid is cleaning me out. Pazak. Well, I'm playing. It's cheating. Whatever, cheater. Statement. My memory core has suffered some damage. Statement. 
Yet somehow, a gap in my circuits makes me feel as if I should remember you. Statement. This is all the more important since during my routine inspection of all potential escape routes from this vessel, I made an interesting discovery. Observation. The Nava computer is voice locked. As a consequence, you are now responsible for course corrections and astrogation. Statement. That is indeed a great burden. It also raises many questions. Query. Why would someone lock the Nava computer? Answer. Presumably to hide where one has been. Statement. I believe you've been somewhere. Somewhere you wish to keep hidden. Oh, hey. Uh, can I ask you something? Talk. About what? Sure, very easy. That's why I dress like this. When they're looking down to check you out, you can usually smash them on the base of the skull or deliver an uppercut that knocks them flat. It's simple. When you want a man, you jab him with a Bothan stunner, then while he's screaming in pain, slap some stun cuffs on him. Then starve him for two or three days until he becomes open to suggestion, then double check his bounty and see if he's worth anything. Call it what you want. Me? I love my targets. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something, somewhere with people, activity, some life. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off-planet. Guess I got used to it. Look, before we get into a game of Guess the Pazak card, pull back on the throttle. I don't know you that well to start sharing our life stories.